So my name is Mackenzie Andy Agbo, and I'm going to talk to you guys today about a project I did two summers ago with the MSN Entertainment team at Microsoft. And as you can tell, it's about music. So where do people listen to music, and how often do they do it? Tons of iPods have been sold, iTunes Music Store, over a billion songs sold. Microsoft's now getting into the portable music market. It's clear that people like music, and people listen to it all the time, at home, at work, in the car, while working out, everywhere. But where is it done most often? A survey of workers says that about 45% of people, once when asked, said that they listen to music most often while at work. And then another 25% said most of the time they're listening to music in the car. So these are the two, the two largest places where people tend to consume their music and where they want it. So but if you look at these two categories, people listen to music in these two places very differently. In the car, it's mostly based on radio. Uh, people have their small set of radio stations that they tend to listen to and generally go with that. But at work, it tends to be through the computer, uh, through online radio. So these are two very different ways of listening to it, but work pretty well for each scenario. But right now online, there are two, there are two main methods as well. There's sites like Live365, which is kind of Radio 1.0, where you choose a genre-based station. So you say, I like rap, and you get a rap station. Granted, there are only a certain number of genres, maybe 20 or 30, and clearly there are more people than this, so you can't, you can't suit everyone's needs perfectly through this. And later on, uh, sites like Pandora popped up, where you get stations customized just for you, where you tell it what music you like, what you don't like, and it kind of tries to calibrate uh, based on that. But the project I did over the summer is kind of a blend of these two. Um, so we tried to we tried to hit the uh, tried to get a blend of how you listen to music at work and how you listen to it in the car by taking local radio stations, taking the exact track playlists that they play, and then playing them to you uh, through MSN radio. So you can say, I like 99.7 in Louisville, Kentucky, and just play that station. So you don't have to worry about the genre, and you don't have to worry about training it. You can just say, this is what I listen to in the car, and I also want to listen to it at work. So there are three kind of phases to the work uh, that had to be done for this. One is importing the data, the raw data of what was played at what time, and then we had to match it against the music database of the MSM Music Store, so we knew what to play, to link it directly to an asset, and then uh, actually making the radio stations. So like I said, we had to take the data from the external source uh, and put it into the music store database, consuming it. Uh, there's security issues there that we had to worry about as well. What if that company, an adversary is posing as that company and is trying to inject data into our database and corrupt us? So that was one concern there. And then as we moved on to matching, we discovered it can be kind of hairy. So radio stations would report what they played in all sorts of formats. You see one example here where it's easy for a human to tell that these two are the same song. Uh, from a computer standpoint, it's, it can be very difficult to match these two together. So this is, for instance, what we'd get from the BDS data service about what the station played. And this is what we have in the database. So we use very, various algorithms to try, to try to match those up efficiently uh, because we had 1,200 stations, each with a 24-hour playlist coming in every day. So we had to be able to quickly match these things in, so we can move on to actually creating radio stations. And all those creating radio stations might seem trivial. Thanks to the Digital Millennium Copyright Act, <laughs> um, it's, it's not so easy. There are rules in place by the government that say you can't play, you can't play our five R. Kelly songs in a row. You can't let the user directly pick a song and have that played. Uh, there are various rules just to make sure that people don't have too much control over what they're listening to. So we had to work around issues like that. So here's the final, the final product. As you can see here, um, and this is also my contribution to the front end, where you choose your city, you choose your city and state, Louisville, Kentucky, that's where I'm from, and it shows you all the frequencies of the stations you've, that are available in your area. And then when you actually click on one to play, this is the interface that comes up in Windows Media Player 10. And I also did this interface showing the Alamart and allowing you to rate and track uh, what you've listened to. So we did get a, 
some claim from CNET. They said this is the most uh, is the most stunning feature as part of the music store. It's something that no one else had. So, San Francisco Chronicle said of similar things, and Microsoft also got sued for it <laughs> uh, <laughs> because we used radio station names uh, without their permission. So that's my project. Right. So, Mackie, how did it feel? Felt pretty good. I kind of felt like I dragged on in the middle two slides, and that's the last one that had to be rushed. Do you feel like you got your point across? Yeah, yeah, I still got the uh, kind of the problem and where we fat in, fit into the overall picture. <laughs> fast starts with bit as fast. <laughs> <laughs> How about you guys? What points do you guys take away from Macintosh's presentation? Uh, Microsoft got sued. Microsoft got, <laughs> Microsoft got sued, there's one point. Okay, what else? Macaday did uh, a bunch of the front end work, like the user facing stuff. So. Bunch of the front end work. Problem solving approach. Problem solving approach. The difficulty behind matching and realizing how computers will do the matching. What else? Problems of radio and music. It's like how much of time spent Yes. You know, forty-five percent was listening in the car, twenty-five percent at work, or vice versa. But what was this last one? Um, yeah. So and those those kind of facts and figures came out. What were the points that you wanted to get across, man? Right. Just the importance of music and how people consume it. Mm -hmm. One and two, the difficulty of the actual process of going from raw data to the end, mm -hmm. and then kind of what the results were and how people took it. Right. I think he did a really good job of pulling all that together. What are some areas that he did well from your perspective? I thought good presence, like immediately sort of reached out to the audience. Yeah. So. Great. Good presence. What else? Just overall good description of the problem and the solution. It's very clear. Mm -hmm. Great. Um, I just say the slides were simple but still pretty effective for yes. conveying his information. Yeah. The slides sort of reminded you of what he was talking about, but a lot of the information was really coming from him, so there was much support. Anything else? What about areas where he might improve? There's one black slide that looks a bit weird. Okay. Just something on it. Okay. Anything else? So the, maybe the background of the slide might be a little odd. Anything else? Yes? Uh, I, I felt like maybe you could have like gone a little bit more into detail on like your personal contributions. Like, I, like you did sort of like mention it, but it was like sort of like a quick sentence or so. And, like, right. Almost, almost in passing, right. Right. Yeah, so I think it may have been an afterthought, right? <laughs> <laughs> the time issue. Yeah. Any any yeah. other thing, areas that you can improve? Yeah, I think the time issue was like I think you did a pretty good job of covering the time issue, but mm -hmm. based on like us discussing the presentation last night, like I thought there was other stuff like that you were gonna fit in, mm -hmm. a couple other things. Like I think your joke at the end worked better. Yeah. You joked it to me last night. <laughs> <laughs> nice. So I, I thought you had a, a, a good use of humor. You had very good creative slides. Um, you sort of had a, you definitely had a presence that reached out and grabbed people, and that was good. We'll give you more detailed feedback uh, a little bit later, but okay. thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Okay. Another one? Or? Uh, no, actually, we're.